Welcome back to another episode of Alternative Space History. We're going to start off in the space, uh, sorry, the R&D building to just see exactly how much science we need to get the rest of the orbital tech unlocked to get into orbit for the first time. We needed about 20-ish points, which is nice because this next launch we're about to do with the flycatcher should give us a, about that. A couple of things to note. Now, the biological uh, sample unit we're going to be using, the thing about it is you have to recover it to get the science from it. It's not one of those transmittable things. And even though this contract doesn't require us to... I believe it doesn't require us to return safely. I could be wrong about that now that I think about it, but... We want to recover it for the science. The other nice thing is because it will be the first time we'll be shooting this rocket up and bringing it back down, we'll get bonus science because we've recovered an experiment like this. A new experiment, I guess I should say. So that'll be really cool. That's kind of what gives us the boost we need because we get a decent amount of science from just the experiment, but we'll also get about another eight points of science purely because we've recovered it. Um, there isn't a whole lot to really talk about these uh, next few launches. The, the biggest downside to 1952 is it's kind of a repetitive year and it's a kind of a grindy year. Early RSSRO is a little bit grindy, especially if you're trying to get to a certain point at a certain time. Which is sort of what we're trying to do. I want to get to orbit by 1954. The other thing though is I want to also start doing rocket planes. Which we are going to start doing in the year 1953. Uh, there's a couple different uh, things I want to touch about that real fast. Why this is slowly falling back down. I have never successfully built a rocket plane in RSS. So this is going to be kind of a learning experience for me. And uh, hopefully it helps you guys out as well. I've been doing a lot of research on uh, designs and stuff. And I've noticed... Because RO with FAR and everything else, like it, it, it's a lot to actually get a good plane to work in here. So once we, we get there, it's it's definitely going to be something we're going to have to work towards. The trick is balancing the funds to put enough points in the space plane hangar to build an airplane within a reasonable amount of time without hindering our R&D research. Now... Because of this, um, we're going to be pretty broke for a while, and as I said before about the satellite contracts, I'm going to be, I, I usually accept those in 1953 if I have everything researching, and it's for two reasons. One, I like to get a little bit of money in hand to kind of push myself so I'm ready by 1954, and the other thing is, is... I know I can complete the contracts. Typically, I'll only grab one of the two contracts to start with. And then once the orbital rocketry tech is unlocked, I'll grab the second one. So we have a, a safety net to make sure we have enough funds to actually build the, the rocket and get it to work. Another thing that you need to start looking towards, especially this early in the game, is getting ready to do your first launch pad upgrade. For those of you who are new to RSSRO... Um, with RP1 especially, the uh, the way the launch pad works in this game, compared to stock, you had to upgrade the VAB and the launch pad. Once you upgraded them, you can do a rocket X amount of size. The way it works with like Kerbal Construction and stuff, is you can build multiple launch pads. The bigger launch pad you build, the more weight it can handle. The VAB doesn't have that limitation or restriction. It, it's purely based off the launch pad. Upgrading the VAB, all that does is allow you to build multiple rockets at one time. Which sounds pretty great, and it is later in the game. Um, early on, it's kind of a waste of funds, because it's fairly expensive. But once you start getting like interplanetary, especially when you're in human space flight, it's nice to have that, that second building line. Purely because you could be building like a... A rocket that has a transfer window coming up and you want to make sure it's ready by the time the transfer window comes up but at the same time you also want to keep doing other flights like if let's say you want to do like a, a lunar impact mission and a Mars transfer is coming up and you get close to the end of the year you can build both those rockets at the same time 
And if you have two of the same size launch pads, you can actually roll them out at the same time as well. But that is something that you end up kind of running into a little bit later in the game. Uh, usually by the end of 1953 or sometime during 1954 is when I really start pushing for the Space Center upgrades because we need the tracking station upgraded. We need mission control upgraded. Uh, we'll have to upgrade R&D soon as well. And we'll need to build a launch pad. Now, a lot of the early planes you're going to be doing, they're going to be relatively small, so I'm not going to really worry about the the runway upgrades for right now, but if we do continue doing airplanes in this game, we are going to eventually need to think about that as well. Normally, when I play this game, I typically just use rockets. I never touch airplanes, so trying to decide how to separate the funding has been a little bit of a trick for me. I have a game plan, and I'm not sure how well it's going to work, but I do have a plan. But outside of that, we have successfully launched yet another flycatcher rocket, which means more science, more upgrades, and more funding. As I sort of said earlier, the thing about 1952 is it's such a, a dull year because all we're going to really be doing is launching these sounding rocket contracts, spending all of our money on upgrade points, and doing research. The game really gets a lot more fun when you get to orbital rocketry. It becomes a little bit more of a more visually pleasing to watch and the missions get a lot more fun and challenging. Which is why I'm wanting to do the planes in 1953 because 1953 is in my opinion a lot worse than 52 because all you're doing is doing sounding rocket contracts and waiting for the tech to unlock. The other interesting thing I've noticed about this is the, the, the aeroplane stuff I've been picking up. It's I don't know what half of that stuff does because I've never touched it. I've been kind of playing around in sandbox a little bit just to sort of see how everything works and I understand it a little bit better after doing some research and messing around with some of the parts. So hopefully I'll be able to successfully get a Kerbal up into the air at least. I guess a human because it's, it's Earth into the air next year at some time and hopefully that'll keep them onto our program a little bit longer. One of the coolest things about the RP-1 with astronauts and stuff is the fact that they retire so like if you don't use them you lose them like it's easy as that. But anyways we have our uh, well it was supposed to be our final rocket for the camera contracts but something happens and I'll, I'll let you guys see it for yourself what I I didn't bother to test this craft after I made it which is on me and uh, I just kind of assumed it would work because I've done something similar the issue though is uh, heat's a real problem with RSS especially when you're using uh, mods like far we came down way too fast because we went way too high and well this sort of happened we got a little hot and we uh well we blew up in fact it blew up so bad that it actually crashed my screen for a second <laughs> and yeah the upside is we got this really cool sunset view out of the deal but that rocket was a failure so we're gonna pop back over to the vab and i'm gonna make a couple of small adjustments to the rocket for some reason, part of it didn't record, and it was literally just me tipping the rocket forward a little bit more so it didn't go as high in the air. Um, I, I don't know what it was. It was like t like 10, 15 seconds of recording, and it just, it just, it just blank. So I'm not sure exactly what happened there. But either way, we're going to go ahead and put that uh, aperture rocket back up at the top so we can go ahead and get it relaunched so we can try to wrap up this contract since we are really low on funds and we, we need this contract to be completed. Um, the other thing is after the third launch with the bio rocket we have the, the flycatcher it, uh, we won't be able to get any science out of it and there's only those three contracts but we will be unlocking the advanced biological unit which is basically like the upgraded version of that bio unit and the cool thing about that is it's uh, well, one it gives you a lot more science and two it unlocks a new type of contract 
These sounding rock rocket contracts are a bit difficult to do uh, purely because they have speed requirements. The first one's 2,000, the next one's 3,000, the final one's 4,000. The 3,000 one is doable, but it's difficult. The 4,000 one is pretty much impossible until after you get heat shields unlocked because the re-entry speed is just way too much. Unlike this launch here where we angled it down some more and we didn't go as high in the atmosphere. We basically aimed for the minimum of the contracts so we knew we could safely return this home. I guess the lesson here is always test your crafts when you make changes to them because I just sort of went for it and it backfired so we wasted the complete uh, whole entire launch. We could have done one more launch this year and we're not going to be able to because I was being lazy. Either way, we're going to go ahead and get ready to do the next contract and now that our sounding rocket contracts are starting to become more doable, we are going to be able to, how do I put this? We're going to start doing those a little bit more here shortly, but because we've been letting them sit for long, the requirements have changed, which means we are going to need to build a bigger rocket. As of right now, the, because we're going to do the last flycatcher fly launch right here. But as of right now, the sounding rocket we have is not quite capable of completing the contract we need it to. Uh, well, the altitude one is not quite enough. We, we can technically do the, the downrange one, which is, is fine, but the one downside to those contracts sitting is they become worth more, yes. But they also, the requirements go up a little bit, and I, I should have been paying attention a little bit closer than I was. I've been kind of busy thinking more about the, uh, the, the rocket planes I'm going to be building next year. So I was kind of sidetracked on that. So learn from my mistakes and please, please, please read those contracts and watch them carefully because by the time I get around to doing them, the requirements, the weight requirement at least, was so much that the rocket I had couldn't do it. But we're going to pop back over to Mission Control, and these are the advanced ones I was talking about. There's the speed requirements and everything else. Uh, please read through those very carefully before accepting them. They are worth a lot of money, but they do have certain things you have to do in order to get those funds. Either way, we're going to go into the VAB here, and uh, we're going to pretty much upgrade the Flycatcher so we can do the advanced bio ones. I know for a fact the Draco 2 rocket is capable of reaching the speed requirements and the height requirements because we've done it several times with this rocket. But what you're seeing me do here is I am just remaking that top capsule piece because because of the way I have, it, I have the, the sample clipped into it. Like it was giving me a lot of issues getting to it. So I ended up just remaking it, deleting it, throwing it on there, and then we're going to add that biological the level 2 biological unit to this particular rocket and we're also going to make sure we have sounding payload and everything else in it as well and make sure the parachute system and everything will work um, I did pre-unlock the biological units just so I can show you guys that contract because those don't show up until you unlock this unit I just went and bought it real fast and then popped over um, and then showed you guys the contract and then we came and built the rocket but this is basically just the uh, Draco 2 Bio, which is more or less because I couldn't think of a good name for it. But with that, we're going to kind of keep warping forward and get ready to do our next launch. Which is going to be our downrange Draco rocket. We haven't actually seen one of these in a while because we've been focusing on the other launches, but we managed to get pretty much all of the camera and biological sample missions done just this year like because our VAB is upgraded enough we can build these so fast we've been able to do so many launches which is super awesome nothing really interesting happened with this rocket it was able to achieve the height and the distance it needed so I kind of just did some cool scenic shots um, I'm using a special mod for that uh, background the stars and stuff it's like an 8k mod pack used with a like some kind of like science box thing and now that I'm talking about it, I'm completely forgetting what the mod is called, but it's super cool and it just makes the visuals absolutely outst outstanding for space. But we're just going to sort of warp forward. You've seen this rocket before. Um, I just kind of just 
sped through most of this and we're getting ready to uh, come back down now we already completed the contract we didn't need to recover it but I just kind of let it come down anyways and pop the parachute and and decided to recover anyway just because we get a couple extra funds out of it I went ahead and just cut all that out because it's sort of boring to watch the whole fall thing now you see that I moved the aerodynamics thing up in the R&D building because I want to have it researched because once it's researched we can unlock the cockpit I can start building the rocket planes normally I just leave those at the bottom and I just, I just research them when I have time but because we're far enough ahead I can still get everything I need to unlock for orbital rocketry by 1954 I wasn't too concerned with it Anyways, we're going to go ahead and get our next Draco rocket on the launch pad. Now, when I said you need to make sure you watch the contracts, I did not do that. This rocket didn't have enough sounding payload to complete the contract. So I figured I can squeeze a little bit of science out of it, and I went ahead and launched it anyways. This will pretty much be the last launch of the year. We will be, however, building the next Draco series rocket here in a moment. But for now, I guess we could enjoy a nice little uh, view of the super cool solar system with that really nice AK pack that I got and a nice little explosion to follow. Um, unfortunately, again, that was my mistake. I wasn't paying attention, but let's pop over to the VAB and we're just going to start from scratch. We're going to mimic the Draco rocket setup. We're going to use a a high pressure steel tank for the top so we can you know, have a decent amount of sounding payload but we're gonna go with a little bit more of a rounder style rocket and we're also going to be going with a slightly thicker rocket which is gonna cost a bit of money to tool I am getting pretty low on funds and I wanted to be able to get the next upgraded engine for the RD 100 but unfortunately it's 47,000 and we really just don't have the money for it right now but I knew that this rocket could be successful in what I needed it to do, so I went ahead and just built it this way anyways. We're going to be making a few tweaks here and there, and we do a downrange version of the rocket as well, and I just tipped it over. I didn't bother to really record that because we just attached the decoupler thing, and then we just tilted it and saved it, and that was it. Nothing else happened. Um, I do kind of go back and forth on this build because I wanted to go a little bit bigger one way and then I, I realized that I wasn't paying attention to the burn time so I made the tank longer and it actually looked more like a sounding rocket. Uh, I'm not sure why I, th I think my uh, redux was having some kind of weird issue because it was showing me that it was a uh, it was basically telling me that that short tank was more burn time than I could use so I was kind of confused by it and then it like reset and snapped and then I was able to get it adjusted. But like before, we're going to go ahead and put those uh, wings on the bottom of it and just give them a very slight tilt. And I do a few tests on this rocket because of the balancing. It had a slight, slight ba balancing issue with it, and it was because the wings just weren't enough. So I do go in and kind of adjust and play with a few things, and you see me kind of cut in and out. But now we have the official Draco 3 rockets. But we are coming down to the end of the year. It's currently December. Which means there's not really much more we can do. We are, however, going to grab this X-Plane contract. Because that is going to be one of our biggest focuses of 1953. We're going to be doing some sounding rocket contracts. As well as some X-Plane contracts. And go for some milestones as well. But at that point... Um, this episode is pretty much over, so I want to thank you guys again for uh, stopping by. I really hope you guys enjoy. I still enjoy making these. Um, again, I'm sorry we had to sort of restart, do the whole save file thing. I took steps to make sure that will never happen again. Also, keep in mind we still do have a Discord, so I'll leave the link in the description. Hope you guys en enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time in the year 1953.